Let's talk about this Cuban instrument that originated at the end of the 19th century and the beginning of the 20th century, the Cuban tres. This traditional instrument was born in the eastern province of Guantanamo. It is believed that the place of birth for the tres was in Maisi, but the exact location is not known. Some people say that without the tres, there wouldn't be traditional son. Other people call it the king of the son. Recently, there has been a worldwide interest in this instrument. The tres has different types of tuning. The original tuning is the one this has now, A, D, and F sharp. There's other tunings, like the one used in Cuban schools, G, C, and E. All sorts of issues affect the tuning, one of them being the string's gauges. As you can see here, we have the first string with a third string, two smooth third strings, and two thicker second strings. This is how the tres sounds in a traditional song context. This tumbao is approximately from the 1920s. There's also different modern son tumbaos, for instance, when the tres is added to a big band. The tres has to fit between the piano and the bass. In this case, the tres would play a contratumbao to the piano part. This is a contemporary son tumbao played on tres. This is another variation. This ought to be played looking out for the piano harmony. The tres should never clash with the piano. Otherwise, as we say in Cuba, you get into a brawl. Let's talk about the tres's roots. I'll be demonstrating a Guantanamo Changui pattern. Guantanamo is a province in the eastern part of the country. This is a Changui pattern. There's also other patterns based on Changui, such as Kiribá and Nengón. These authentic rhythms are also from the Guantanamo province. This is a Nengón pattern. There are variations from the Changui family. Now this is Kiriba.
Cuando hacíamos referencia ahorita sobre When we la, talked about the tres tunings, tres, I forgot to mention an important tres, fact. Se me, se que el tres en When the tres tiempo, appeared as such, in the realm of the peasant world, el el it was played using downstrokes. Through the years, and with the evolution of Cuban music, the technique changed, nurtured with many influences from American music, and in order to achieve perfection, the players have changed and thus simplified the instrument's technique. This is why nowadays, the strings are played with a downward-upward movement, otherwise known as alternate picking. For example, this is a technical exercise for the tres. This exercise must be practiced as much as possible without over-exercising the hands. The goal of this exercise is to achieve independence between the right and the left hand. After a while, the player will easily be able to acquire the lanzapua or alternate picking technique. This is another exercise for the right hand. We've already seen the right hand movement. Let's review this tumbao. The tres appears at the time when sextets, sones, habaneras, and guarachas were in vogue, although it was not included in the instrumentation for any of them. As Cuban music evolved, the tres became more and more popular, and I would say that it is at the height of its popularity. Nowadays, you can find the tres as part of the instrumentation in a typical orchestra, in a charanga, in a son orchestra, in a salsa orchestra, in a symphony, etc. You can find the tres in pretty much any type of musical group. The tres is as hot as ever, both locally and internationally. Okay, let's show how the tres is used in a mambo context. This is one of the variations. The tres can play voicings or do contratumbaos with the horns. It can also play together with the bass and the piano. It should always match the piano harmony without playing the same part. Look carefully at the harmonic progressions and avoid clashing with the piano. Let's look at the tres bolero style. This bolero was composed by the late Pedro Flores. It's called Obsesión.
Montuno. We just play the montuno after the bolero. This adds a lot of movement and creates what is known as a guajeo. The guajeo is a kind of segue to begin a solo. Let's talk about the son in the cha-cha-cha. It is not very common to include a tres within the cha-cha-cha instrumentation, but it is possible. In fact, there are recordings with the tres in the cha-cha-cha. Let's play another cha-cha-cha variation. Es un ejemplo de, de los patrones más actuales. 
lento, vamos a hacerlo un aire un poco más lento para que puedan... Let's do more Son Montuno. Mañana me voy a Sibánico, mañana. Mañana me voy a Sibánico, mañana. Señores, le contaré lo que a mí me sucedió. El susto que pasé yo con una perra una vez. Resulta que me encontré a un hombre arando. Tierra, y era cerca de una sierra, sierra de encerrar madera, y no sé de qué manera, salta y me muerde una perra. Now, this is an example of a guajira. The importance of clave in Cuban music is something very fundamental. The clave must always be played correctly, otherwise we say one plays with a writing clave or out of whack clave. Let's play something, for example. Everybody needs to be very cautious when playing son tumbaos, so that the clave is not out of whack. For example, this tumbao. The clave comes in on the upbeat of the measure. Most tumbaos in Cuban music start at the pickup measure, or the upbeat. So be very careful with the clave placement. Let's see this example. Ta, 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 ta. Ta, 
es eso? That is. Fretboard. Let's work on the diminished seventh. This scale is widely used, especially amongst the tres players. We say it is like the tercero's secret weapon. It can be played in different tonalities. Another variation could be this one. Now let's do it slower. The tres is an important instrument that is placed within the harmony. It basically plays triads. When making triads, the player must be able to determine, especially when playing with an orchestra, what note he can drop and what note he must resolve to which chord, and so forth. Because the tres plays triads, C, E, and G. On very few occasions we play the chords as such. For instance, if the tumbao chord is a 13th chord, C, E, G, B flat, D, F, and A, we must decide within that 13th chord which notes to eliminate, since we can only play three notes at a time. We would choose B flat, which is a 7th, E, which is a 3rd, and A, which would be the sixth of the chord, or, in this case, the thirteenth. We would play three notes, and you see as the bass note. If we were to do the tumbao, we would have to do it like this, using the thirteenth of the chord. That is, we would use the three main notes of the chord, other than the tonic, which would be played by the bass, or two main notes. Our two main notes are the 7th and the 13th. Well, let's see a little tumbao. This is one of the first tumbaos that I learned when I was living in the mountains.
now we're going to talk about the Punto Guajiro. That is one of the patterns of the Punto Guajiro. The tres player must wait to hear what the singer is singing, when he stops, when he cues, etc. The Punto Guajiro is a matter of taste between both the singer and the tercero, but the tercero must follow what the singer does. For example, Then the singing would come in. The tres player has to wait for the singer to accompany him. Almost with the same melody or something similar to what the singer is singing. And then he continues accompanying him. Para, donde corta, como pica en... 